NBC Sports. When Michael Andretti was a boy, he lived in the shadow of his famous racing father. With Mario's careful guidance and Michael's natural talent, championships were not far away. The first IndyCar win came 10 years ago. Now he's the winningest active driver. On Portland's road course, Michael's recent drives have been tough. But Michael comes to the Rose City off three victories. At Nazareth, he led over half the race. In Milwaukee, he grabbed the lead with five miles to go. Detroit made it two back-to-back. -back. Dad's happy, and Michael's going for three in a row today at Portland. For the first time, ABC Sports visits Portland International Raceway for the Indy cars in the Budweiser 200. They've already started their engines. They're out on the circuit right now as we start the parade laps. Hi and welcome. I'm Paul Page. Some great stories developing here. One is that in the warm-up this morning, they ran it in a downpour. And as a result, trying to jump out of the throttle to get around a slower car, Scott Pruitt got a couple wheels off on the grass, got it into the barrier damaged the back end. The Patrick Racing Team was ready to go to work on that car. They've changed the rear suspension. But Danny Sullivan, what does Scott Pruitt have to think about? He's starting on the front row. Well, what he's worried about is he had a very good car. Can they get it back to exactly that setup that he had before? He's starting on the front row. He wants that car that he had in practice. And did they get it back set up exactly that way? Now, the sun is shining here at the moment, but there's a chance of showers. What do you think? Well, I think he's also concerned if he's got that car, they want to make as as fast to the front as they possibly can with those Firestones while it's dry because if it rains, they don't have as good a tire as a Goodyear and they know they'll move right to the back. Here's the starting grid on the pole. Alex Zanardi is second pole for the teammate of the points leader. Alongside Scott Pruitt, this is his third front row start this year. In row two, Jimmy Vassar, the championship leader, has scored points in every race this season. And Brian Herta, who makes his first top ten start on a road course this year. In row three, it's Andre Ribeiro, the Rio winner. And Michael Andretti, who's looking today for the hat trick. In row four, Paul Tracy. In his three starts at Portland, he's finished third twice. And Greg Moore, this is the best starting position since Australia. In row five, Jill DeBaron, who has won the most recent race on a natural terrain road course last year at Laguna. And Mauricio Guzman, who finished seventh here one year ago. In the sixth row, it's Christian Fittipaldi and Alan Zer Jr. In row seven, Adrian Fernandez and Robbie Gordon. The eighth row, Parker Johnstone and Emerson Fittipaldi, who won here in 89 and in the rain in 93. In the ninth row, Raul Boisel and Bobby Rahal. Row 10, Stefan Johansson and Eddie Lawson. In row 11, Mark Blundell and Roberto Moreno. The 12th row, Jeff Krosnoff and Juan Fangio. In row 13, Michelle Jourdain Jr. and Hiro Mashushta. And the 14th row, P.J. Jones and Eliseo Salazar. So the cars are out on the circuit right now and beginning to move into their formation so they can take a green flag. Here are the stories. Well, pressure points. Everybody's taking a look at that championship ba battle that's going on right now. What about the hack trick? Can Michael, in fact, get it done? Scott Pruitt's problems, and what will happen to the weather? Those are the stories that we're going to be tracking here today at Portland. Now, here's the way the points are lined up at the moment and you can see that Jimmy Vassar's once enormous lead has been whittled down substantially and the circuit here at Portland is fascinating 1.95 miles around nine turns mostly off to the right and we'll be listening to Michael's radio because we have a report that Michael Andretti will be coming into the pits we don't know why we'll keep an eye on him doesn't look like it there though here they come onto the pit straight. Green flag should lie just ahead. They come off the turn clean. Weak flag green. Zanardi comes into the lead. As Pruitt tries to get around Jimmy Vassar and they battle for second place. And boy, look at him bundle up. These are the festival curves. It's really a chicane, a right, a left, and a right. And the traffic through there if you try to get three wide, you've got a problem. But speaking of a problem, what about Michael? Michael's dropping back. He was in that black car on the left of your screen right there, but he's dropping back. He's obviously got some kind of a problem. Gary, what's wrong with Michael? 
It's an engine problem, Paul. I don't know if it was a full misfire or a case of the engine just missing, but he reported the problem. The crew is ready on the wall. They've got electronic pieces. They're standing by. We don't know if he's going to be able to get around to come in or just what the status of the car, but great concern, obviously, for Michael Andretti, who's won here three times in the past. Three-time champion who's looking for three in a row in the IndyCar. He won at Milwaukee. He won two weeks ago at Detroit. But it looks like Alex Zanardi is the man to catch at the moment. And Scott Pruitt is doing everything he can to accomplish that. Matter of fact, Danny Sullivan, if we were questioning whether or not that car got put back together, well, obviously it did. Rivero tries to move to the inside of Vassar. Oh, and look at Paul Tracy in that red and white car. He slipped right under there, right to the left of your screen. He took advantage of uh, him trying to make a move. Let's go to Gary. Michael Andretti comes in and he immediately shuts down the power plant. That's not a good sign. You see him gesturing from the cockpit. The rear bodywork comes off. And now the search for electronic gremlins begin. What a heartbreaking way to start your race day in Portland for the man who's been on a tear, having won three of the last four, making a charge toward a late season push in a championship. Michael Andretti sits in the cockpit. Nothing changes on the race course. Zanardi is still the leader while Scott Pruitt is trying to catch him. And Jimmy Vassar, there he is, the points leader, sits in third place. Remember, he did not do well at Detroit in terms of points. And if he wants to keep his lead in the championship, he's going to have to start performing the way he did early in the season. Look at him lock the brakes as he comes in there. He can't do that. He did that on the first lap. What happens if, if you lock it up like that, you'll flat spot a tire, meaning you'll flatten one area in the tire. You do that, you get a vibration. The car is shaking all the time because every time it hits that flat spot in its rotation, it makes it uncomfortable. You don't want to do those too many times early on because you'll have a long way to your pit stop. And what's happening right now is everybody's trying to get into a rhythm, including Jimmy, because this is a rhythm track. This is the fourth race this year that Zanardi has led Michael Andretti back into the fight, Gary. Just went by you, Paul. He dropped almost uh, two laps, a good lap and a half. We heard one radio conversation where he said he thought it might have something to do with a butterfly. Now they'll find out if they've been able to come up with a solution as they change some of the electronic components. All right, we'll try and uh, listen in on Michael's radio as he does that. Well, what he meant by that, too, butterfly, you saw his gesture when he came in. He was pushing his hand forward meaning something to do with the throttle. When he held it down, nothing responded or he got too much response. Beautiful blue skies overhead. No rain on the horizon, at least at the moment, Jack Aroon. Well, Paul, let me update you also on Scott Pruitt. You guys questioned whether the setup was going to be right. They're very happy with the setup they've got. Now, how did he crash in practice? Talking to Jim McGee, here's exactly what transpired. Because he blew an engine, in the Friday qualifying session, they ruined those tires when the track officials pushed it off into the gravel. IndyCar said, look, we'll let you scuff in another set of tires. In the downpour, they had no choice. They wanted to scuff in the tires. They went out. They got out into the wet real bad when they were trying to overcome Hero Mashusta. And that was all she wrote. They got into the wall. But they're very happy right now. Now, that shows you good team preparation, that they knew exactly what all the measurements were on that car. They had the car back in their paddock area in just a matter of uh, minutes after the incident. And I'll bet if within 10 minutes, there was no question at all that uh, everything was going to be fine and they were going to get the car repaired. Well, Jim McGee and all these teams out here, but Jim McGee is one of the best managers out here. They keep a record of everything that's going on. The minute that thing happened, I talked to him. He pulled off a couple of corners and to replace the drive shaft on the right side put it back together and put it up on those pads that we see where everybody was, um, you know, measuring up the car and getting it back right. Look at Brian Herta here. He's showing some smoke at the back end of the car. Matter of fact, the uh, officials in race control, the IndyCar officials, have been taking a look at this car. The course marshals around the circuit have all reported it. But, Danny, it comes and it goes. Well, it does. See right there, you just could see a, see it smoking just... I mean, it's just a whiff, but what they don't want to do is it'd be dumping oil down. Two things can happen. It can be dangerous for Brian, but it can also be dangerous for the other competitors because if he dumps a bunch of oil down, they come driving through, they're going to slide off and have an accident. Teammate to the team owner, Bobby Rahal, a team that came here with some uh, new components, uh, especially front wing assembly, so they really need both those cars to stay in the fight not only to try and win, but to try and get good test time on the new components. 
Ribeiro and DeFerrin. Ryan also was one of those guys that got hurt at the start. He got in there and got pushed in on the inside, and a bunch of cars went around him on the outside. So he's lost some ground, and uh, I'm sure he'd like to make that back up. This is a battle for fourth place. They have kept Ryan Herta out, and he continues to be in this fight as you look down from the Honda Helicam at the winding first set of turns on this circuit here in Portland. Well, one of the things I've always hated is when I, when I had the warning light or there was smoke coming out or whatever, and then it all went quiet. Usually there's a problem when that happens, and then when it goes away or the light goes out, you think, well, everything's okay, and that's usually not the case. So Alex Zanardi jumped off of the pole into the lead of the run. Here he comes. Still being chased by Scott Pruitt, but they've evened out at the front. Ayers Vassar with Tracy challenging him. Gary Gerald. Paul checking with Scott Remke and the team on communication with Brian Herta. Their telemetry doesn't indicate any problem. They're hopeful that it's just a case of the car bottoming and kicking up a wisp of smoke. Whoa, and Tracy gets Whoa, he's going he fast. He's going before the wall. Oh! No. But... Did the tire barrier help him? It's really hard to tell from this angle, but I don't see anything bent at the back, and I don't think the front got in all that hard. No, but I tell you what, those that's a new kind of tire wall that we've got here, the way they wrap them and everything. That really did a great job, but um, just got out there a little wide, on the gas, went over the curbing out there, and then once you get on that grass, don't forget we had heavy rains here this morning. That grass is still wet. The, the millisecond that you touch that grass, you're gone, and the car almost feels like it accelerates. And that's much the same situation that got Spruitt, uh, Scott Pruitt in trouble. He got two wheels off of the course. Once they're off, it's like being out there on ice. But I can tell you one thing that Paul Tracy and the Penske team thankful of was that that tire barrier was where it was, because if that had been the concrete wall, there would have been a lot more damage to that car. So for the moment, at least, until we find out the fate of Paul Tracy, that leaves Al Unser Jr. as the full representation of the Penske team. You saw, you saw the tires were spinning backwards there. You wonder what that was. He was trying to bump start it. He got it in gear, and they were trying to get it. He thought maybe he could just choke, you know, get it going a little bit, and away he go. But uh, unfortunately, they're going to tow him, and then he'll jump start it. Paul Tracy losing positions quickly after a good battle up at the front. Alex Zanardi jumps off the pole and takes the lead and continues on. and the Budweiser IndyCar. Hot enough for you? With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat fused. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. The road to IndyCar racing starts at the Toyota Atlantic Series. Past champions like Ray Hall, Andretti, and Sullivan have taken this very same route. That's why Toyota is committed to the Toyota Atlantic Championship, because we may not know who the next series champion will be, but we know where he's headed. Goodyear AquaTread revolutionized wet traction design. Now Goodyear introduces the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty, the new all-season InfiniTread. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate.